Hi everyone, this is Melissa from DJ Event Planner, and today we're going to talk about your event form options. When you look at your event details pages, do you realize that you have some control over what you see there? Are you curious where to add your tax rates and discounts? Do you need to add to your next action options? In the event form settings, you can do all that and set some defaults to pre-populate when you add an event. Let's take a look at how these settings can work for you. First, go to Setup, Application, Event Form. On the Default Options tab is where you can choose your options to be automatically set when adding a new event. You can choose your beginning event status, and you can also choose an event type, such as if you only do weddings, you can have that event type pre-populated when adding a new event. For default venue and package options, we have set this account to a to be determined option. Remember, in order to save a new event for the first time, you have to include a venue and a package. Setting these as a to be determined default allows you to save an event where you've not yet finalized which package your client wants or where the event is going to be held. Then, you can edit the event as needed once you have determined which package your client chooses. And you can also set default employee options as well. Other default options include request information form dates, contract due date, next actions and next action dates, and default client portal settings. This is also where you can set default planning options for primary planning forms, timeline, special song list, and evaluation forms. Next, under the Employees tab, you can choose your employee display options and create employee roles. The employee roles setting creates a drop-down menu on the Add Edit Event page, which lets you assign your staff to various roles at the event. Also, you can change the maximum number of employees per event. This can be set from a minimum of 1 to a maximum of 15. Under the Financials tab is where you can set your maximum number of add-ons per day, the cap being at 20. You can create your discount list and add additional scheduled payments here. Remember, your first payment is always considered your retainer, so this setting is for your second and third payments based on days before your event date. Next, on the right-hand side, you can set your tax rate that applies to your area and a second rate as needed. And if you need further tax settings, you can find your options here. The Layout tab is where you can choose how you view your event details pages and what shows on the Add Edit form. For the page layout options, you can choose these options for desktop, mobile, and edit views. When viewing your event details pages, you can view them in one of three ways, with tabs, as one page, or in an accordion style. Remember this is the default set for your account to view all events, you do have the ability to choose the view option per event each time you view. It will then reset to the default option. Let's take a quick look at each within an event. Currently, the default view for event details pages in this account is set to tab view, as you can see here, by the blue tabs running left to right starting with client information. If you wish to view this event in one page view, click view options here then choose one page. You will see now that you can scroll down through the page and each section will flow into the next, again starting with the client section at the top. To change the view to an accordion style view, once again click view options and select accordion. This view presents you with each section, which you can then click to expand for details of that section. Now back to the event form settings. The Status Details block allows you to choose what you would like to appear here in this gray box in the event. Your choices are to show the salesperson for the event, the primary employee, or you can choose to keep this information hidden. 
You can also choose if you want the employee's wages shown on the report page. If you choose to hide the wage on the events page, you will see a button you can click to show you the wages while viewing in the event. Next, click on the Manage tab Naming and Ordering button. This section is for renaming your tabs or the order in which they appear on your event details page. To change the order that the tabs appear, left click the tab, then drag and drop it into its new place. Just below that, under Tab Wordings, you can change the name of the tabs within your account, such as if you want to change the SMS tab to Texts. You will see that it changes above in the Ordering section. When renaming the tabs, please be advised that we recommend short names to prevent any possible layout breakages. Also, if you wish to not display a tab within your account, simply rename it Hide. This will hide the tab only in the Event Details page, not in this Settings page. In the Event Form settings, you can choose which of the event-based fields you want to show on Add Edit Event. If, for example, you do not need to show the salesperson on the event form, such as for single ops or small companies, then uncheck the salesperson option. On the left, you can choose which client-based fields you would like to show or not show on Add Edit Event. Moving on to the next tab with Event Form Settings, click on Options at the top. In this section, you can add to your next action list, add to your attire choices list, and also to your inquiry list. These list settings control what options are available when you add edit an event. And finally, we come to the validation tab. This is where you can enable or disable these four options. Require availability check for employees. Enabling this feature means that when adding a staff member to an event, the employee drop-down menu will be removed and you will be required to check staff availability prior to selecting your staff member. Enable fee filler warning and disable fee filler warning if package price equals zero. When you have enabled fee filler warning, a confirmation pop-up is triggered every time there is a change to the financials that affects the deposit or total fee. If you enable the Disable Fee Filler Warning if package price equals zero, that pop-up will not be triggered if you choose a package that does not have a price. And finally, warn if a date is in the past when adding a new event. This will pop up a message if you try to add an event for the current date or a date prior to the current date. The DJ Event Planner software works for you how you would like it. The event form settings are just one way to make event details pages within your account unique to you. If you are seeing this video and have not yet signed up for our 30-day free trial, please do so at djeventplanner.com.